Hej. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, can I get my presentation there? So nice to meet you guys. Maybe I, I, I come closer because we are not that many. Um, so you can ask the question why I'm here. Anyone knows maybe? Because actually I'm no founder, no CTO, no VC, not an entrepreneur. Um, ooh. Um, but I'm here for a reason because I joined Prezi a few years ago and it changed the way I'm thinking. Um, if you think about Americans, how Americans are raised, they learn that yes, they can do it. And how we um, Europeans are raised, or how I was raised, I learned that yes, Americans can do it. And I think this is just wrong. And I know this is wrong because now I have a very good example. And this example is Prezi. And I would like to share you my learnings, what I learned at Prezi, how you can create a successful company. So I work for Prezi. We have three offices, maybe you know it's San Francisco, Budapest, and Seoul. Um, and we are growing really rapidly. Currently, we are 150 people um, <clears throat> and still growing. I need water. Oops, I need water. Sorry. So, and one of the biggest challenges for us is that three out of four startups fail. And these statistics um, comes from not, it, it does not come from um, Europe. Um, there was a survey and these statistics comes from San Francisco. So three San Francisco based startups will fail definitely. And we would like to be that one that succeeds. So productivity is critical for us because you can have a really good ideas, you can have plans, but if you cannot execute them, then you will fail. You have to adapt to um, changes quickly. You have to react quickly. You have to deliver your MVP in immediately. So during my talk, I would like to show you um, what we learned <clears throat> in our journey, how we work on to be more and more, productivity, more productive over time, and how such a things like non-tracking holiday can actually even make your company more productive. Um, let me start with a story um, like seven, eight years ago when I first joined my full-time job. I was really excited. It was my first job. I earned like some good money. Like it, it was enough for me like, to move out from my um, um, family, so start my own life. There were lots of challenges. I, I really liked to work there. And there was one thing that was um, really strange for me, and at that, at that time I, I could not express it like the way how I, I know, know currently. And the thing was that how I lived that time, I, I usually woke up very early in the morning and I preferred to go to the job like early in the morning, around 8 maybe. Um, and hence, I could leave like earlier in the afternoon, so I had some lots of time in the evening to spend with my girlfriend. But all the other guys in the company um, used to arrive late to the office, around 10, and because of this, they um, leave the office like around 7 p.m. And it caused lots of frustration for me because I was the new guy there and I felt very, kind of guilty that, can I leave the office at 5 p.m. when everyone is still there? Um, and of course, I could have like, ha have a discussion with them about this, but. I was totally new to this job. I, I just did not feel that I'm the guy who can like, have a discussion like this. Um, so how it ended up that I did not go home that early. I, I went home at the same time when those guys left the office. So, so even though I, I, I knew that I was working really hard and I, I achieved what I wanted to achieve that day, I still stayed long in the office until then. And it was because I just, I just thought that this is the way how I should behave in that company because this is how everyone works and how everyone behaves. And let me just 
put this story aside and, and I will come back to this. And <clears throat> let, me, let me ask a very s stupid question. What is a team? Do we consider a bunch of people located in the same place as a team or do we think that guys working in the same time zone, they are a team? Maybe. Or do we think that guys with the same manager or coming from the same function, they, they make a team? And it turns out that yes, um, these are attributes or can be attributes of teams, but these attributes don't necessarily make a team. Like, you can just think about, for example, any open source project. Those guys working really hard and efficiently together probably never met in life um, so far. Like, GitHub is really um, proud that they have distributed teams. Or you can just think about cross-functional teams, how most of the startups work. Like, lots of guys from different functions come together and they work really good as a team. So just imagine any, any, any company of yours, may, maybe a company that you're running or a company where you are working. Um, and what you can see most of the time that these companies are, are divided, divided by functions. And so when like, there's a customer request, then there are lots of guys involved to fulfill that request. But usually these guys are not sitting in the same place. They are not working closely together. They are working in their departments. And this is not good because by the end of the day, those guys should work together who are really there to fulfill a request of a customer. Um, there's a very nice book about this um, called Connected Company. You should read it. It's very cool. I'm a book freak, so you will see some other books as well. Um, the, if you want to run a company, I think this is a very nice book. Gives a very good overview with lots of examples um, from other successful companies, how to do and how not to do. Um, and still, if you think about like organizations, companies, most of the time they have fixed offices, fixed office hours. But does it really matter if I'm like 10 minutes late in the morning? Or does it matter if, if, I, if I would like to stay at home and work from home for a couple of days? Not really, because that's not how we should organize the work. Um, you should just allow people to work however they would like to and let them work. Um, the other aspect of teams, um, what makes these teams productive? Um, and the very important thing here is that the teams should have clear goals. They should know how they can achieve these goals and you should measure the progress of the teams reaching their goals. So you will immediately know if something goes wrong, and you can also evaluate them by their results. It also helps them to always know what's the next step. So it, it's never a confusion that what should I do in order to reach the goal. It should be very clear which direction we are going. It also helps to adapt to changes quickly. So if you want to change, then it's very easy because you are working in very small iterations. You always know the direction. You, you have a plan, so you can just, you know what to change in order to adapt to those changes. Also, a critical aspect of productivity um, is that the team should have um, all the expertises in order to fulfill the request. So that's why, for example, cross-functional teams are a very good example how to organize teams, because then there are maybe designers, engineers, product managers, or proje project managers, and all the other guys who are needed to do something. And it also helps to give ownership for them, because if we are in the team, have everything to do what we would like to achieve, then we will feel ownership of it, and then we can be really accountable for what we are delivering. And just two more books um, for you to read. Um, there are two really nice books. One of them is The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, and the other one is, is um, The Beautiful Teams. And from The Five Dysfunctions, there's a very nice um, chart which, which is based on the analogy of, of the Maslow Pyramid. And it um, takes a look at all the aspects. What, what are the key aspects of a productive team, what makes a team efficient. And it starts from the basics, like having trust 
um, in each other until how to deliver great results. But of course teams don't work like just somewhere like alone separately. These teams are embedded into organizations. So it's very important that you should embed these teams into healthy organizations. And by healthy I mean that everyone, all the teams and the individuals have clear expectations. What do we expect from them and what can they expect from us leads managers? So this helps to drive and evaluate by results and nothing else. And it also helps to get things done because it's just very clear where are we going, how can we go there, what can I do in order to achieve these goals. The other thing what I already mentioned a bit is cross-functional team. I don't say that you should always have cross-functional teams. Sometimes functional teams make sense. But most of the times, to fulfill some requests to do something, you need lots of guys fr with different expertises. And th this will mean that you will like, create a functional team. And it's very good because then they will have the power to do anything. And also, the power will remain at the lowest level where they can just really execute the plans. And if you think about this, it's like having startups um, inside startups. Because why do we love startups? Because we think that they can do anything what they want. They have all their expertises. And this is what we would like to do in the team level as well. Ooh, whoop. Can you help me? Thank you. Here we go. I think I skipped one. Yeah. Um, and I've already said that it's very important that um, teams should have ownership. Um, and there's a very interesting thing that um, software engineers at Prezi, um, they really like to wake up during the night to fix something. Um, and it's because not that they, they just workaholic and they don't like to spend time with their friends or family or whatever, they don't want to sleep. But it actually turns out that it's better to wake up during the night if something goes wrong and fix it and then go back to sleep, then just re realizing in the morning, like 9 a.m., that for the whole night the website was down. And this attitude happens because they feel owner of what they are doing. Um, and I have another example, which is um, I just, when I was putting together this presentation, I, I realized this, and it helped me a lot to understand the importance of ownership. Like, what's the difference someone in the U.S. border or someone at a call center or, or, like the f or between a founder of a company? Actually, I, I think there should be not um, too many. Usually what we say that maybe the company owner worries about problems, but the guys in the call center or, or the U.S. border do not. The first time when I went to um, San Francisco, it was very amazing for me to say, to, to, for me to see um, that in the border, um, there are like big transparent saying that the guys sitting in the border are the face of America. And it must be very cool to work like that, that you know that you represents the country when you're sitting there. It's not about that you're like feeling some, or doing some administration all the day and you think about that this is your job. <clears throat> no, your job is there to represent the country. And you can just feel good about it. You can feel owner about it. And I think it, it can apply the same, like, for example, if for the call center folks. It's, your job is not only like picking up the phones and talking to some people around. Your job actually there is to represent the country, because when I'm talking to you via phone, 
then actually, for me, you, you are the company. And if we dig deeper, what's very important that, yeah, we have great teams, we have a great organization, but by the end of the day, what's really matters, what, what really matters are the individuals in these teams, and that they should have work-life balance, you can say. Um, and I would like to challenge you that I don't believe that there's such a thing as it's like work-life balance, because you only have one life. You, yes, you can work, you can do your private stuff, but by the end of the day, you have one life, so try not to separate it. And how, <clears throat> how can you help this? Or how can you, you with your company help, <clears throat> help this? One thing that just allow people to work from anywhere, because does it really matter where are they working? They should be available for their team, because that's what's Im important, not that exactly in which location I'm, at, I'm sitting at. And yesterday, <clears throat> in one of the talks, you already saw that there are lots of communication tools which can help this. So it's not an excuse. Yes, yeah, sometimes it, it helps if we are sitting together in the physical same location, but it should not be a problem that some days I just um, work from home. And such a things like such project management tools like Kanban can really help you to, even if guys are located physically in different locations, it's very easy to see how's the team um, progressing and what are the problems maybe. The other thing is flexible office hours. Um, does it really matter if I arrive to the office at 9 a.m. or just I can go back to my um, my example, what I'm, uh, what I'm was telling you in, in the very beginning, that that was it really important that which time I, I I I should leave the office? Not really. What what what's important that what are you doing? Is your task done? What what are the deadlines? Um, and for example, for this case, um, in Prezi we have flexible office hours, and I'm just not guilty to go to the swimming pool like during lunch time. Because does it really matter if I go to the swimming pool after work? No, I will still work the same amount of time. I will still finish my tasks. Um, and also, actually, but why is it good? Because it also helps me to not to separate my life. So if I have some, something private to arrange that I won't look at my watch continuously during the whole day that, oh, I really would like to go home now. When is my job over? Because I have to do something. No. Just stop, let's arrange your private stuff, and when it's ready, come back and, and continue your work, because I, I don't care. And all these things help to achieve one thing, that you should optimize for flow, because we all believe that flow is a good thing. We are the most productive when we are in flow. It feels very good to be in flow. It's a good thing. So why don't we just help people to, to be more, more times in flow? And having like ping pong tables or, or magic fridges in your company is not about because it's cool or you can hire more people because of it. But it has a message, it conveys a message that when you need some break, then you should take that break and just come back later when you are full of energy again. Or if you are hungry, don't wait until lunchtime, just go to the kitchen and eat and come back when you are not hungry anymore. And with lots of other things, you can support this, like um, having your people to go to conference trips, providing them free books, yeah, books. Um, so lots of things. Um, and here's an interesting thing what we introduced, um, not that, yeah, kind of recently, is that you can take any amount of holidays at Prezi. And there's a very nice quote, which I think really applies here, that. In a word, we hire adults, and then we treat them like adults. Because you know the best when you really w have to go to rest and take some vacation. I should not be the one who, who should tell you that, OK, this is the vacation time, you should go now. And you should be the one who know how much time do you need in order to recover and, and, and take really rest. Um, and this has actually kind of um, nice advantages that because of this, we have less summer and end of year peaks because people go on holiday when they want or when, they when they it's convenient for their family and not when, when it's legally should or 
when we tell them. And also because of this, we don't have to care about this whole thing. It's just less administration for us. Um, and it raises an interesting question. Um, there was a Google engineer who quit Google. He, lo he loved the job, but he, um, he was just interested to create his own company. So he did, and he's the CTO and, and founder there. And he read lots of articles about this, that yes, unlimited holidays are cool things. All the cool startups are doing this. So why shouldn't we just introduce it? So they introduced it. And it turned out that it caused lots of frustration because people were afraid to take that many holidays that they did before. Um, it, it was just not clear. So can I take more than before or shouldn't I because I'm, I'm late with my deadlines or how is it? So what he did in the end, that actually he, he went back to the old system and now they have fixed amount of holidays again. Um, but I think he did, he did it wrong because the problem was not with this tool. The problem was that they did not have the culture of this. So you can introduce all these things. You can have ping pong tables. You can have magic fridges. But your company will probably still suck because what's really important that you should have the culture of it. You should have communicate about these things. Why are you doing this? Why is it important that we have all these, these things? And what I understand now, um, what was wrong in my very first full-time job, not that people were staying late there in the office, but there, it, the, it was part of the culture, or the culture was kind of missing to be able to speak honestly about these things that can I go home earlier because I think I, I did my, all my best and yes, I would like to go home earlier and I'm not in the same time, like time zone as you guys. And talking about culture, it all goes down to core values. And I think this is the very most important thing what you should learn that core values help a, com helps a, com help a company to be successful because it established um, the culture. And we believe in our core values that press it so much that actually they are printed on the mugs in our kitchen. So every time I go in the morning to have a um, cup of tea, I always decide, OK, which is my value today? Um, and it, it's really interesting, and it really helps us to um, stay aligned with our values, to talk about these things regularly. Because without having core values and introducing the culture of it, it, it just doesn't make sense if you have unlimited holidays or not, because it will just cause more frustration instead of doing something good. Um, when I was creating this presentation, I, I thought that it's kind of cool what I'm doing, what we are doing in these startups, because it looks good. Um, we have all these fancy things. It's totally, um, totally different from what other big companies did in the past. And I just um, came to this paper called Managing Without Managers. Um, and the message of, of this quote is pretty in line with what I'm trying to say. But what makes me really sad that actually this paper was published in 1989 by the Brazilian business guy who actually runs a really successful business, which is a really successful business today as well. Um, so actually, it's no, no news. This guy already thought about all these things. So it's proven that it works. It's not only the startups. And it's not only the startups who can do it. It can be introduced in any, any company. So I think what's just really important that create the culture of it and just enable your people to work, because that's what matters in, in the end of the day. Thank you very much.